Uh, in Los Angeles, there's a large uh, active asset management uh, shop that some of you might have heard of. It's called uh, Capital Group. Uh, they've been around for about 85 years, and they manage about uh, $1.4 trillion. Uh, and uh, the capital group has a number of different funds, kind of like Fidelity. Uh, but unlike Fidelity, which has these star managers like William Danoff or Peter Lynch, uh, capital, group run things, capital group runs things a little bit differently. So they assign teams of managers to manage a specific fund, and each manager will, for example, manage uh, a few hundred million or a hundred million or maybe a billion out of the larger fund. And then they uh, collect kind of all the different manager picks and that's what comprises the whole fund. And, um, and basically the, the best ideas fund, uh, Charlie said was, it was simply the picks were the ideas that the managers had spent the most time on. Uh, and and so when they when they spent the most time on these ideas, they were the most excited about them. And of course, when they put all of these ideas together, things didn't go so well. And um, and you know, in poor Charlie's almanac, he he talked about how the 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 human uh, the human mind uh, is a lot like the human egg. So once the first uh, once the first uh, idea gets in, uh, just like the human egg, it, it locks up and uh, seals off any additional ideas uh, from coming in. And so you have this, uh, what you call the, what he calls the commitment and consistency bias, where basically uh, we, we get locked into uh, what's taken hold in our, in our brains, and we see this even uh, in the uh, political discourse, if you will, you know, if you talk to folks who uh, love Donald Trump, they can't see anything wrong with him. And if you talk to folks who are on the other side, they can't see anything right with him. And then, of course, reality probably is uh, some shade of gray in the middle there. Uh, but, uh, but Warren Buffett also has a great quote. He says, what human beings are best at doing is interpreting new information so that their prior conclusions remain intact. But getting back to the human mind and, uh, and the human egg, uh, you know, I, I thought about how is it that we can uh, kind of counter these biases, you know, because, uh, because uh, it's obviously important because on one hand, we, we cannot make investments until we spend time studying companies. Um, but if you spend time studying companies, you get biased. So it's kind of an, an issue. So, so I was thinking about, well, how, how do I uh, try to build a framework which can get around some of these issues? And um, so I came up with a few hacks. You know, I thought there might be like two or three things at least I can think about that can be useful. But the first hack was that just being aware of these facts is, is a huge advantage. So being aware of the fact that uh, we have a lot of biases, uh, our mind can play kind of games, tricks on us, uh, you know, the shutoff mechanism in the human brain and so on. So being aware of that, uh, being rational, you know, uh, Charlie Munger says that uh, he hasn't been successful because he's smart. He's been successful because he's rational. And another thing that is, I think, a very useful uh, approach is to be fluent in the other side of the argument. So if you're going to go long a stock, it probably is a very good exercise to spend time developing a thesis on why to go short. And uh, that'll force your brain uh, to think about things that normally it doesn't want to think about uh, and such. So uh, the first hack is, hack is just kind of be aware and, uh, and, uh, and let, ra let rationality prevail. The second, the second hack, which is, which is basically to paraphrase Nancy Reagan, just say no quickly. So, you know, we have this built-in bias where once we spend time 
we get pregnant with the idea, well, don't spend a lot of time, right? And so you are rushing through a lot of stuff and only spending time on stuff that is looking like an absolute no-brainer. And one of the things about the investing business, uh, which is so much better than baseball, is there are no call strikes. So we can let hundreds and thousands of ideas go by, and it doesn't matter. So it doesn't matter if we miss something that goes up 10x or 100x or 1,000x. What matters is what we actually invest in. So it's a very forgiving business from the perspective that we don't really need, need to know everything about everything. We don't need to act on everything. Uh, we, can, we can miss lots and lots of stuff, and, uh, and it can still work out well. And the, the advantage, so the, you know, just say no fast, is what it does is it frees up a lot of time. So if you're, if you're going through companies, and you know, many times when I look at a business, uh, most businesses I look at, I'm done in seconds. You know, maybe it takes 10, 15, 20 seconds. Uh, if, if it doesn't hit me uh, very strongly with, uh, with some intensity in the first few seconds or first few minutes, I move on. And um, that's the second hack is uh, just say no fast. And that kind of uh, leaves, leaves room. And, and of course, if you are a voracious reader, and you kind of buy into what Charlie Munger says is the uh, lattice work of mental models, then uh, many times things will come together in a very rapid time frame. I mean, uh, Warren Buffett talks about that he got a cold call from a banker who, who suggested to him that Dairy Queen, uh, which was privately held, was a company that was available for sale. And uh, so Warren said, well, we have our acquisition criteria listed in an annual report. Does it meet all the conditions? And the guy said, yes. He said, well, send me the numbers. And about, I think in less than half an hour, Berkshire had made an offer and they had a deal. And so there was no way Warren Buffett could have looked at Dairy Queen before because it's not a public stock. But he knew enough of the business to understand that basically, you know, franchise restaurants, there's a certain way you can look at them. And you can figure out kind of what they're worth and, and what you ought to be paying for them and so on and so forth. The third, the third hack, which is kind of re related to the second hack, is, um, is uh, basically uh, this notion that, uh, that Eli, Eli Bro talks about, you know, the, uh, the art of being unreasonable. You know, that's the title of his book. It's a great book, actually. Um, and so Broad is a very successful entrepreneur. And so in the quest for investments, be unreasonable. So don't settle for, you know, this thing is at 13 and it should be 18 and that sort of thing. Uh, I always tell people, you know, please try to send me things which are PE of one, because PE of one is great, uh, maybe PE of two, and uh, I can deal with that. You know, single digit math is easier to deal with and, uh, and such. And, uh, and, and so basically, there are, there are over 100,000 publicly traded stocks on the planet. Um, there are always things going on with different companies. Uh, getting into distress or high growth or various other things. And because these are all auction-driven markets, uh, by definition, they have wide swings. Uh, I mean, you can throw a dart at a New York Stock Exchange company, look at the 52-week range on the company, and it would be something like $75 to $150. And if you pick a random home in Palo Alto, that is not the fluctuation in the stock price, in the, in the home price. And so auction-driven markets have this nuance where they uh, kind of you know, either get euphoric or they get pessimistic. And they might do both in the same year. And uh, so that's what leads to uh, the distortions and mispricing, and that's what we can take, uh, take advantage of. So, um, so those, are, those are some of the thoughts I really wanted to share with you. Uh, again, this is kind of work in progress. I, 
um, still trying to uh, get better at it, and I just want to make sure that um, I am aware of, of the fact that spending time on, on companies is likely to make me biased. And, uh,